I made this game for GMTK Jam 2022. The theme for this jam was Roll of the Dice, and I had 48 hours to make this game. Challenge accepted. Unfortunately, I had a really hard time coming up with an outside-the-box idea that didn't incorporate explicit dice imagery or randomness. So I decided to make a top-down twin-stick shooter type game where the player has to hit enemies with matching dice in order to kill them. I had the idea to make the enemy health use dice instead of a traditional numeric health value. The player would have a queue of dice and would have to throw the correct die at a target enemy. Only dice that matched the first die in the enemy's health bar would do damage. The general gameplay would be that the player would have to clear rooms of all enemies in order to progress to the next room, with the ultimate finale being a boss fight. For those that watch my videos, you know by now that I really like to sketch out my ideas in a sprite before writing any code, so I started with that. Actually, technically, I started with a palette from low spec, which I really liked, called Funky Future 8. I loved the neon look of this and the example art that was provided, so I made a pledge to myself to rigidly adhere to these colors for the game. I would not use any color except for these eight. I recommend trying this if you have difficulty with art. It forces you to get creative with how you represent different elements. I ended up having a lot of fun doing an initial sketch of the character. You can tell by my reaction here. Ooh. <laughs> Excellent, <laughs> excellent, excellent, excellent. Just give him some big freaking stupid goggles, dude. I love it. All right. You can see that I didn't really know where I was going at all with the art. I didn't have a plan. I just kept throwing things at the wall until it stuck. And that's my advice to all of you non-art types out there. You don't need a plan for your art. Just throw something on the canvas and see where that takes you. You may be surprised at the creativity that comes out when you let yourself freely work. I sketched a basic enemy after I was satisfied with the player. Again, this was haphazard and totally unplanned. It ended up just being a sort of robot looking thing. I don't know. I created some dice next. When they're side by side, I think it illustrates my idea better. They will sit under the player in a queue and they will be consumed from left to right when the player shoots them. I was planning to make them re-roll when the player reloads, so each queue would contain a random sequence of dice. I was satisfied with the initial art, so I hopped into Godot and started creating the player entity. I've done this so many times by now that I basically knew what I was doing. I created a reusable velocity component that I could share between the player and the enemies, which would provide some boilerplate methods for me to manipulate the velocity of entities. I created the player's die projectile and a reusable health component that I could use to configure the health of the enemies. I was calling the health hit dice, as this corresponds to the number of dice that would be used for the health. To match that, I also created a health bar UI component that would display the hit dice that the enemy had. And finally, I created a hit box component, and within a short period of time, I had a working proof of concept. Next, I got to work on the tile set. I found this to be really challenging. It felt really difficult for me to create something that looked good when I was constrained by my small color palette. Ultimately, I think it turned out fine, and I proceeded to implement it in the game. Then I decided to try my hand at animating the player using animation frames in a sprite, and I could not get this to look good. Rather than keep at it and use up a bunch of my time, I decided to abandon that and take a different approach later. In jams, you have to be really careful about what you spend time on, and you have to be quick to cut an idea or approach. If you feel like you're getting bogged down, that's a good sign that you should be doing something different. After a short break, I decided to try my hand at streaming some of the development on this channel. The footage you see now is the VOD from my first stream. I had a lot of fun, and many of you popped in to hang for a little while, which I enjoyed a lot. I started the stream by working on the UI for the dice queue for the player. I was trying to be very careful to set it up in a way that would allow me to add animations later. I ended up using control nodes to get the dynamic centering and alignment of nodes, and then I used a sprite node nested within this tree for the texture. Once the dice queue was set up, I added some code to it, and it worked pretty well. 
Now that I had a pretty solid foundation, I decided to start working on polish. Since I didn't feel like my core mechanic was good enough to carry the game, I decided to spend a disproportionate amount of time focusing on the game feel. First up was a trail for the dice being thrown by the player. That was a pretty simple setup. Then, to really sell the effect of dice collisions, I added a squash and stretch animation. The result was a bouncy collision which was really satisfying to throw at enemies. I moved on to animating the character. Rather than spend time doing traditional animation frames, I decided to cut the player up into pieces and animate those elements within Godot with an animation player. I probably spent way too much time on the player animations, but with some help from my live viewers, I got the animations in a good spot. The player was feeling really good, so I decided to call it a night and continue in the morning. I was up early Saturday morning and it was time to make my enemies interesting. Previously, they just stood around doing nothing, but throwing in a bit of pathfinding and player chasing fixed that right up. I then hit a snag with player animations that sunk about an hour of my precious time. Since I was animating each piece of the player individually, I had trouble coordinating the body animations with the hand animations. Then I couldn't figure out how to rotate the hands properly when the player was scaled to negative one in the X direction. This scaling was done in order to have the player face the mouse without needing to have a separate animation for left and right facing directions. I decided to put off this issue for a while and work on other things. I created art for the enemy projectiles. I decided to make them playing cards, loosely representative of the Ace of Spades. I didn't know if anyone would actually be able to tell what it was in-game, but it worked well as a projectile. I basically copy-pasted the code from the player's die projectile for this card and then gave it a particle trail to make it look nice. Up to this point, I had not done any work on the actual level layout and how the rooms would be structured, so I started on that. I wanted to do a style where the camera stayed locked to the room that the player was currently in, and then snapped to the next room when the player crossed a threshold. I struggled with smoothly interpolating the camera from room to room for a while before dropping that and just making the transition an abrupt change. Then I created some enemy spawner nodes that could be added as children of a room. These were configured so that upon entering a room, all of the child enemy spawner nodes would spawn the corresponding enemies. I booted up my stream once again and started work on finishing the tile set. Once that was done, I worked on the level layout a little bit more. I was trying to get the entirety of the level built because I was way behind on that. Then I created some laser gates that would block access to the rooms until all of the enemies in the current room were cleared. Next up was more animation work. The enemies had no animations, so I gave them a walk animation and an attack animation. I was especially happy with how the attack animation turned out. With some enemy animations added, I went on to add a dash mechanic for the player. The dash mechanic was dual purpose. It allowed the player to dodge projectiles, but it was also used as the only way to reload your dice as a player. I thought that this would create some interesting gameplay decisions for the player. If the player wanted to dash to avoid damage, they'd have to sacrifice their current set of dice. Likewise, if the player wanted a new set of dice, they'd have to dash potentially into danger. Also, this decision reduced the amount of work I needed in order to manage player reloading. The dash was pretty straightforward to implement, I added some squash and stretch to really sell the effect, and it was done. I shut down my stream, took a short break, and then continued work. I created an exclamation mark that would display next to the enemy health when the next die the player had would damage the enemy. The code for this was a little tricky, but I got it working with few issues. It did end up being a little buggy, but it worked 90% of the time, so I decided it was good enough. I also implemented a very basic player health system, which would restart the current level when the player lost all health. Then I added some camera shake because of course I needed it. The last major thing I absolutely knew I wanted was a boss. I spent some time drawing up a boss character and doing a basic implementation in game. This boss was just a classic bullet hell style boss with three different attack patterns and a lot of health. The art turned out pretty good for the boss too, so I was happy about that. The game was looking really good at this point. There were still some big items missing, mainly sounds and animations. There was also a really annoying bug that would cause all card projectiles to immediately die when the enemy was too close to the wall. So I had to make time to fix that. Once again, I started streaming. 
It was Saturday evening at this point, with roughly 18 hours left in the jam. This stream, I spent almost all of my time working on polish. I mentioned earlier that my main focus would be to make the game look and feel really good. I started prioritizing polish work for the remaining jam time. I added player invulnerability after taking damage and enemy death effects. I also fixed the issue with enemy projectiles being immediately destroyed when enemies were too close to walls. I then animated the dice UI elements. I wanted to make the UI look like the dice were being ejected from the queue and from the health bars. I think it turned out well, and this simple addition added a lot to the feel of the game. I took a short detour to add a floor tile to the tile set to break up some of the level art monotony. It looked kind of awkward, but it served its purpose. After that, I stopped work for the night. Submission day had arrived, and I had roughly seven and a half hours left to finish my game. I was feeling a lot of pressure at this point, but I had a clear list of priorities for the day, so I started working through that. The first priority was sounds. Using my always valuable sound effects library, I picked out a bunch of suitable sounds for dice and various impacts. I also found some evil laughter sounds, so I used those for the enemies. I implemented those sounds throughout the game, and the results were pretty good. With sound effects done, I added a basic in-game tutorial. I opted to give the player an enemy to use as a punching bag in the tutorial area, and I think this was a great decision. It allowed the player to experiment with the mechanics and the movement before starting the level. I managed to get the rest of my list done, which included various small fixes and other polish elements. Getting my list done freed me up to implement another enemy type with my few remaining hours. I made this enemy an explosive barrel that ignites itself and chases after the player. I made it explode when it got too close to the player and added the relevant sound and particle effects. After this enemy was done, I found and fixed a few remaining issues with the game. I also made minor tweaks to the level and to the game length. And that was it. The game was done. I decided to call it Ace of Sphinx because the boss looks somewhat like my cat. Honestly, it's not a great name, but it wasn't worth burning time to come up with a different name. You can play the game now by clicking the link in the description below. I'm really happy with how this turned out. It's definitely one of my favorite jam submissions so far. I hope you like it as well, but please feel free to leave any and all feedback you have on the game's itch page or in the comments below. See you in the next video. Thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, be sure to like and subscribe. If you want to support my work, check out my Steam page, link in the description. If you want to learn more about building a game with the Godot engine, check out my Udemy course, link in the description as well.